Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Always Open. Thank you for joining us today. I am your host, Barbara Dunkelman, and today I'm joined by two of my wonderful friends, starting with Andrew Rosa. Hey! I'm back, back, baby. Hello. And also joining us once again, Hannah McCarthy. Hello. I'm Hannah. Hi. Welcome back. I'm practicing not saying Mariel's line this time. I know. That was so funny. When we had Hannah and Mariel on an episode, Mm -hmm. and I introduced Hannah first, and she went, it's me, Hannah. And out of just just, just, uh, just osmosis of loving Mariel too much. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Well, welcome back. They're very happy to be here. Yeah. Very happy to be here with you and Andrew. Andrew, what's your biggest fear? If you want to share that with the internet. Uh, <laughs> being yeah, like, being truly big... known by another person. Yeah. Yeah. Like, being truly seen. Um, yeah. Being perceived by anyone not on my terms. Um, yeah. No, a deepest fear. Uh, yeah, what's your deepest fear? Uh, and your work schedule and your coming and going times. Um, you know. Also your social security yeah. number. Yeah. Yeah. Father's yeah. last name. Uh, we actually, we, you know, I, I think truly... De- like the deep ocean is really high up on the list, but yeah. also being like arrested and jailed for a crime <gasps> I didn't commit, like being wrongfully imprisoned. That is that's very, w- feel- very scary. Fe- well, feeling like feeling like knowing you're innocent and knowing that you didn't do something, and, yeah. and like no one believe no one being believing Harrison you. Ford, being yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Provasic. Like that's what I want to yell <laughs> I didn't in a Chicago hotel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't even have a wife. He yeah, he yeah. falsified the RUD ninety or whatever he says in like, uh, the Fugitive. Great movie, by the way. It's anyway, a good movie, yeah. But yeah, being like uh, wrongfully accused, oh. which was the uh, Leslie Nielsen parody movie <laughs> of The Fugitive. Anyway, <laughs> it's called wrongfully it's accused. It's called wrongfully accused. Aging oh, ourselves wow. here. Yeah, yeah. Ugh, My really. greatest fear is watching wrongfully accused. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! What's it's your bar- well? Yeah, what's yours, Barb? If I don't. I honestly don't like death. Barb fears <laughs> sure, nothing. Well, yeah. Barb has zero fears. Yeah. Um. I'm no. I think it's. I'm scared of too much that I can't mm. pinpoint what my uh, greatest. Fear hard. Is. Hard to pick a single fear. Yeah. Yeah. Um. A deep ocean's definitely yeah. pretty scary, but I've never really thought about it too deeply, which is why I don't mm. think I mm. fear it. But when oh, I'm actually yeah. on the ocean and I start thinking, like, yeah, imagine if I just got lost. Yeah. Deep space too, like seeing yeah. gravity. There, oh. and just being like that. Oh, oh, talk oh, about. Oh, I mean, I will never be in that. I mean, at that point, I would just but... go. <laughs> yeah, just like, well, <laughs> peace out, y'all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I am God. punching. I am punching my time card. Good night. Yeah, no, I'm not. No. I. So it's so it's just extremes. I think because the deep yeah. ocean is definitely scary, but also I didn't used to be afraid of heights, but I'm super <gasps> afraid of heights I'm, now. I've always been terrified of heights. I, Did something that, happen? I don't know. Like I used to be. Yeah, no, heights would not phase me at all. Mm. And then at some point, like in my mid twenties, something just a switch clicked. And now, like I'll watch. Have you ever watched Man on a Wire? Ugh. I like I wa- I watched the trailer for that recently and was like, Ugh. yeah, just the trailer for it. It's on a screen. Yeah. I'm not even there, and I'm like, Ugh. my my gut is like yeah. dropping. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god. And Ugh. planes, for some reason though, totally fine. I guess there's like just the mental like, well, it's out of my hands. Like, let go and let God. I just gotta be like on the plane and just like not think well, I think about also, it. Also, you can't really register the height. When exactly. You're, it, the same thing happened to you when I went skydiving. Because. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I am also like deeply afraid of planes. Like uh, I do not like flying. And I think it is because it is out of my control. <laughs> sure. I'm yeah, such yeah. a control nightmare person <laughs> that like being on a plane and knowing I have zero control over the situation that I'm in a tin can in the sky is so deeply terrifying. Yeah. It is the lack of I'm, control. I'm more scared of the drive to the airport than I am. I mean, that's in terms <laughs> of odds, in terms right. of odds, of an, that's absolutely, you should be more yeah. afraid Because of at least when yeah. you're flying, the people who are flying you, well-trained, sure. are specialists, there's, right. you know, the, all, the only people who are doing it are the people who know how to do yeah. it. Yeah. Every Joe Schmo could yeah. fucking drive. Grandma man. Becky is driving with, you know, her her prescription lenses are out. They're yeah. Not correct. Kids yeah. screaming in the back. Yeah. Like there's all that. Yeah, and so many variables. So many things that could go you wrong. You should have to get, I think, your license renewed every I, 20 years. 100% agree. Oh, right. Even ten, more than 20. Years. Yeah, I would say way more frequently. I would say like, yeah, I would like say every, a, I would say after 60, every five to 10. Yeah. And, and by that, I mean like take a driving yeah. test or yeah. driver's test yeah. or something like that. And yeah. not to be like ageist or ableist, but. My God, I have been, I have well, been almost sideswiped by many a blue-haired just <laughs> or just two knuckles just, yeah, on the steering wheel. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, Jerry Seinfeld is... has a great joke about how the the Florida state flag should just be two knuckles on a steering wheel with a hat on it, yeah, with a hat sticking above it. Yeah, so good. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, I also think part of what we would be, I would add, like, I would love 
better public transportation so yeah. that you don't even have to like if i god i love trains i'm the such best. an old person the, no now, they're the best like, they're the best i love trains i wish we had more trains or more like metros or subways or things like that and then i don't have to drive i don't want to drive it's also like that it's predictable yeah there's no traffic involved in those i would love it you and get it's, on you get off it's passive Transportation as yeah. like a, a per, I can li- I can read a book yep. I could listen to a podcast I could listen to this podcast that's why I, I want could, all you know, cars to be uh what's the word like automated autonomous like at some that, point like yeah. n- like completely driverless cars mm. everything just like runs with each mm. other mm. so like all cars know where all cars are so you could just like be like I need to go to the library <laughs> let me really, get a car yeah. to my house I'm just realizing how many things I'm afraid of because I'm also very afraid of like robots and AI so <laughs> going yeah. back to Barbara's Who isn't? point I'm Who very isn't? afraid of everything it's basically. so it's so funny I love I can't think in minor the movie Minority Report children uh, around 1999 2000 turn of the century um, they show <laughs> I like love the, that movie it's amazing they show this like far flung future where there are like hot wheels inverted tracks of like cars and it's like mm-hmm. i'm sorry this like this is so futuristic There's, they can predict crime with like mental telepathy but we haven't solved public transit by then. It's like everyone has an individual driverless pod that's like uh, cruising. I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. That's not the future we want. I mean, by that point, like every everything has a bullet train that's getting you in there. Here, here, yeah, here, yeah. Here. But yeah, it's just, just very funny. Transportation or uh, uh, what's it called? Teleportation. Uh, teleportation. Yeah. Transportation. Go. Just do transportation. <laughs> Easy. Futuristic. Well, that's that's so funny. I, I think I had this conversation with a good friend of mine recently that like, we, we've solved it in terms of moving like large amounts of people from one place to another. It's trains. It's mm-hmm. always been trains. It's <laughs> maglev trains. It's, it, we aren't going to get a better thing until like it literally is a scientific leap that like fundamentally shifts humanity's place in the cosmos. Yeah, that we're is, getting like, beamed up. Exactly. It has to, yeah. it's trains and then big question mark <laughs> teleportation. Yeah. There's re- that, that big gulf, who the fuck knows what's in there, yeah. but it ain't better than trains until it's like, uh, until we're getting <laughs> Think about where you want to be. Yeah, exactly. There. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, the dream. Yeah. Agreed. Save so much time. Well, speaking of travel and space and mm-hmm. all these different mm-hmm. fears we've been talking about, I have a, a question that I want to pose to you guys. Mm-hmm. I saw this one online and it really intrigued me. If people started to colonize Mars, would you go? No, absolutely not. So I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm, is right to it. Just, I'm gonna just jump right in and say absolutely not. I am afraid of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I am deeply afraid of. We, I think we were talking like I'm afraid of as afraid of deep space as I am of the deep ocean. Like I also think we t- we were saying before. I think we know more about space than we do about the deep ocean. Probably. I think we do. Regardless, I, because we can't, there's certain places we just can't see or yeah. get to in the ocean, whereas space you can observe. It's just to a degree, not my business mm-hmm. to be there. None of my business. None of my business, and I'm deeply. I don't even like flying on planes, as I said. Why yeah. would you put me on a rocket? Maybe, I, yeah. you know, cryogenically frozen. I'll put it to you that maybe perhaps the reason that we don't know more about the ocean is because there wasn't the big ocean race in the mid-century against the <laughs> Russians. Like, we didn't have, like, everyone's getting to the bottom of the ocean as quickly as possible. It was all space. We so need to get ev- to the bottom of this. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Everything was focused on out. Like, we were just going out. So all the money and all the science was for shoot it was pointed out of out, the planet, out of yeah. the planet. Yeah. Yeah. and so that's what got all the money and the attention and that so got us so many advancements mm. and so yeah I, I think it makes sense that we're much more focused mm. on you know a, 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 you know extraplanetary things mm. than the nightmarish things in the deep that have <laughs> yeah, like ad- that have like yeah. adapted to survive on pressure like i don't even know if you took one of those like fish that like is completely clear that lives in like total darkness, if you brought it to the surface, does it just explode? Like what? Like what happens It'd probably to go, it? Sh- <laughs> <laughs> oh my Some eyes! Crazy. <laughs> no. It would. Ha- yeah, it would have to explode. Right? I don't know. It yeah, would have to. It's I insane. Mean, it's not something horrible. That's also would like the creatures that live under there <sighs> and things we probably haven't even discovered yet. Oh yeah. Versus like, I mean. I'm one of those people who absolutely believes there are aliens because how could there not be other life in of this course. universe? Yeah. It's just impossible. Um, but we've yet to find any. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yet the, the deep sea, we still have yet to find things that live down there and it's right, it's on our earth. Yeah. <laughs> it's freaky as fuck. It's terrifying. So I thought I read like, it was of course probably a joke tweet, but it was like, there's something like a million unidentified types of jellyfish or something in the ocean. I was like, yeah, of course. I, I mean, that's probably made up, but it's also very well could be and true. they're all going to sting you on the beach. They're all going to get They're me. coming for your legs. They're, they're coming, coming from your me. little the and pins. And frankly, it's their right. I don't live there. <laughs> okay. It's not my home. Okay. I'm taking a hard stance on this. 
I never need to hear the phrase shark infested waters it's ever again. House. It's their water. It's not infested. It's human infested. It's human infested. Well, this is the like, again, not to date the time we're recording this, but it, well, I mean, hopefully, well, I don't know what I should say. Hopefully, but like orcas, like the orcas taking down ships. People are like, ah, they keep attacking yachts. I'm like, well, the yachts are in their land, their home. Yeah, they're in their way. They're in their way. It's like the same thing if a bug comes in my home uh, it, it, that doesn't in, belong there. But if I'm out in the jungle and there's a bug, I'm not going to bother it. That's where they live. That's its why, place. Why would I be mad at an yeah. orca? Especially because the <laughs> orca who orchestra- orchestrated oh. it, um, she was hit by a boat. And now she's like, you know Son what? No more. Bitch. And she's teaching the other orcas how to just exactly. attack rudders. She, she's, she's going Liam Neeson Taken yes. style. I have a particular set of skills. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like my like, second Liam Neeson reference. Maybe. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, maybe, but no, it, Leslie. We had, oh, that yeah. was oh. Leslie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're getting, oh, they're yeah. blending together. Blending together, yeah. Uh, but point being, um, no, I would not go to Mars. Okay. Um, Andrew? Yeah. Not Mars? a fucking chance <laughs> going yeah? to Mars. No, like, it would have to be again. There's all these things like you know, like firsts, like we're you know we're talking about AI, we're talking about technology. These yeah. like brain implants that are coming. I'm not ever getting a brain implant until it is like <laughs> until there's like a cricket wireless store for them. You know what I mean? That they're like, so like, ubiquitous, so, so proven, yeah. so <laughs> like like the technology is so dialed in yeah. that like there's no chance of it just like frying my brain, which probably will never happen. But like. So colonizing Mars, I mean, there better be a, like a Hilton up there. You know what I mean? Like it better be just it's fully colonized. Fully colonized. Yeah. I'm not doing any exploratory missions up there. I'm not going to plant flags. I'm yeah. not. I'm not living in a bubble up yeah. there. I it would have to be well colonized That's before I would go there. That's a good question. I guess are you That's saying are we the exploratory crews like well, establishing a presence there? The question that it is written verbatim is yes. if people started to colonize started Mars. Started to colonize. Mm. So mm. Uh, for me, yeah. I think it would vastly depend on the status of Earth. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah. if it's like, mm. oh, shit's going down here, you're probably going to die if you mm-hmm. stay here, then mm-hmm. yes, absolutely. Like mm. if Mars is my only option, then yes. Yeah. Um, but also I wouldn't go uh, <laughs> if it wasn't dire here and it wasn't prepared for life quite as <laughs> much as I would want. Like I would like a CVS. I was going to say, you know? I, have, I wear contact lenses. Um, who's yeah. going to be making my contacts? Do they have someone there who can handle that? And also, uh, the prescriptions change over they the time. Really so you do. need an optometrist I'm up there. I'm going to need an optometrist. Can you imagine anything more frightening than being blind on, on Mars? Mars? <laughs> but Just... also, is healthcare free on Mars? Is, are there any nations and any like... I, there's a lot of questions that have to be answered for me. I think it could be kind of freeing to be all on one planet and not have any like division from cultures from mm. religions like if it's all just like human beings which is uh, martians what it would be nice yeah. if it were, yeah yeah exactly. you'd be martians. martians well you know in 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 that respect i think it would be interesting because at that point your humanity why am i quoting in quotes in scare quotes <laughs> humanity no hum, like the humans on mars would be unified in a common goal which is to not die is that it? would be yeah. that would be your main goal is to just keep each other alive yeah. which would be a yeah. much more like i think hopefully just peaceful loving society because we what you would all be united with a common goal but yeah. like i don't you know i'm looking off at christian because i haven't watched the expanse but i feel like there's a lot of this in the expanse so you know what is the it's, ex- it's a, <laughs> we're getting is it a movie or is it it's a, a, it's a show it's based it's on show. books oh oh yeah. is yes. that the one where they like yeah. have like a tray like a they live in like these like cylindrical Play. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm making about. us launch into a, a, par- a portion of conversation I know nothing about, but for anyone in the comments and who's listening to this who watched The Expanse, let us know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please um, tell us more details. Because I feel like people who've never seen the show talk about it. We've not seen it. I've heard it's incredible, yeah. uh, but I do feel like there's a lot of that in The Expanse. So totally. if you're interested in this topic of, of uh, people on Mars, um, and yeah. I don't suspect it goes very well. I don't think from what I've seen of The Expanse <laughs> that everybody lives in a very unified, happy <laughs> Um, well, from what place. I know about TV shows, yeah. uh, <laughs> conflict occurs. So, so uh, no. <laughs> episode yeah. one, well, everything's great. Credits, <laughs> just like, okay, I mean, well. Ted yeah. Lasso, pretty close. Yeah. 
That's true. Ted Lasso is probably the closest show to there a, is to like, oh, when there's conflict, they talk about it. A frictionless show is where like everything gets solved instantly. It's like, oh, wow. Okay. Well, that was yeah. easy shit. Yeah. Um, damn. It's a feel good oh, show. Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. let us know in the comments if you would uh, colonize Mars. Yeah. Uh, I would love to know mm. what people's answers on that yeah. would be. Maybe more adventurous people than us. So I'm, mm-hmm. I would be very excited. Yeah. And I would say people, if you were uh, eager for uh uh, fame and notoriety, yes. being one of the first people on Mars, you probably get your name on the plaque. Mm, yeah. If you were looking at a statue. Have, a statue, perhaps doing this. <gasps> yeah. With Should like man's... the earth floating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, Ooh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. All right. Well, we are going to <laughs> shift gears <laughs> drastically into our question uh, for this episode. And if you have questions for us, whether it be an icebreaker question for the top of the show or a question about something going on in your life that you want us to discuss on the show, you can email that to alwaysopen at roosterteeth.com. We, of course, would love to hear from you. Now that we're in the thick of summer, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals to support sunny, active days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track for reaching all of your goals. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. Just two minutes. All you have to do is heat and enjoy, and then you could get back to going outside and soaking up the warm weather. With over 34 chef prepared, dietitian approved options every single week, there's always something new to try. I have been enjoying every single meal, of course, but I also really enjoy their smoothies. This one is the chocolate brownie smoothie. They also have tons of other flavors. They have fruit smoothies and everything, but these are so delicious and nutritious. Round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 45, over 45 add-ons, including breakfast items like our delicious apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, and potato, bacon, and egg breakfast skillets. Just head to factormeals.com open50 and use the code open50 to get 50% off. That's code open50 at factormeals.com open50 to get 50% off. 50% off. Enjoy. Let me know what you think of this brownie, by the way. So good. I'm going to have it now. It's getting to the point in the summer where you pretty much need to be in sunglasses every time you go outside. But it seems like my sunglasses always get stuck in my hair. It's not cute. I want to do that cute beachy thing where you wear your sunglasses on the top of your head like an accessory. But then when I go to take them off, you know, you got the wind and it's just a tangled mess with potentially a chunk of your hair missing. Well, thankfully, our friends at Shady Rays have new tangle-free aviators, these guys, that have a patent-pending nose piece that they designed specifically to avoid tangling. I mean, I'm wearing them right now. Look, you could just slide them through. Nothing comes up. They're amazing. They're also beautiful and stylish, as are all their sunglasses. I love the variety that they have, and they're all super high quality, super durable, and super cute. Plus, Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. If you lose or break your sunglasses, even on day one, they will send you a brand new pair with no questions asked. Exclusively for our listeners, that's you guys, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. So head to shadyrays.com slash tangle free and use the code open for 30% off their best selling tangle free aviators and so much more. Save before they sell out and try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Enjoy, enjoy your tangle free glasses. They're amazing, it's magic. All right, are we ready? Let's mm-hmm. do it. This is quite a doozy. Oh, okay. And it's a bit long too. Okay. So strap in. How do you end an 11 and a half year relationship as a man who has attempted to end the relationship several times? I've not been feeling the relationship progressing for a few years now, have not felt reciprocation, and there have been extreme complications throughout. Mm-hmm. She went from living with parents to moving in with me five years into the relationship. So I don't feel as if she's developed her independence. I feel heavily relied on, and she doesn't take her fair share of responsibilities. Hmm. Sleep is a main issue with the relationship. She is a light sleeper, and my tossing and turning has gotten me ejected from the bedroom many times. It got to the point that I gave up on sleeping in the bedroom, and I slept on the couch for several months before we finally had a discussion to try and figure it out. This continues to be an issue even now. While not to that extreme, I will still regularly sleep on the couch and wake up in the middle of the night and move to the bedroom when she is fully asleep. Another problem is, and I would argue this is the bigger one, that she decided she wanted kids. Mm. And at the beginning of the relationship, I stated I never wanted kids Mm. and kids were not in my future. 
She agreed that our future would not have kids, but that changed when my brother and sister-in-law had their first child in 2017. My girlfriend then decided she wanted kids, and I hesitantly agreed at the time, thinking I might be okay with it. Fast forward to 2020, and I reaffirmed my unwillingness to have kids. My girlfriend, however, still insists that I do want kids and that we are going to have kids. Oh. In January 2023. Oh, there's more. Oh, no, there's more. In January 2023, she ended up pregnant due to being sick and not properly tracking her fertility. This led to the situation of her being pregnant and me not wanting children. All conversations to have the pregnancy terminated were dismissed. And I was told I was having this kid with her and that was the final decision because she would never terminate a pregnancy. That is not something she would ever do. At the first trimester ultrasound, the baby was discovered to be a molar pregnancy that stopped developing in eight and a half weeks and thus needed to be removed immediately at the risk of being cancerous. Now there is no baby in the picture, but my girlfriend still is insisting on having a baby immediately after being cleared of possible cancers. Long story short, how do I end an 11 and a half year relationship that I've been trying to end for years without being the asshole for leaving my girlfriend after a traumatic pregnancy complication that I never wanted to go through with her in the first place? So the sleep was a real <laughs> yeah. red herring. Buried the lead. Yeah, sleep feels like a red herring because it really doesn't matter at the end of the we, day. We did edit this question down yeah. just a tad because yeah. it was it was a very long question. Um, yeah. And a lot I, to I was unpack. considering removing the sleep part <laughs> in general. You know, I would, yeah, yeah, that's a lot to unpack. Um, but I think the answer, I'm looking at Andrew and Barbara, I just, I, swiftly would be the, my recommendation would be to end it at, with, with, with post haste uh, yeah. and respectfully. But and yeah. respectfully, swiftly, and with extreme prejudice. I Meaning do. you need to like absolutely yeah. have an exit strategy, a plan. Like you need to make, like, it can't just be like, yeah, I, I yeah. like, hey, I think we need to talk tonight. Oh, okay, cool. Well, then, and have like, no, like, because I I fully believe you need to get out of this relationship. Well, it sounds it like is. he's tried and yeah. failed. So it's like either she's been pressuring him to stay with her or there's some type of like, he feels the need to stay with her for other reasons. Like she's I, gone through something traumatic. Sure. I, I don't think it was, he said it in there um, that they're married or anything. Mm -hmm. Cause like, I think that maybe would be one thing where it's like, okay, sure. there's like a legal Sure. Yeah, he process. said he said girlfriend, I believe. Yeah, so yeah. it would be, I think it'd be one thing if you were married legally and had to go through like the process of uh, divorce and separation. But I think if it's just a relationship you've been in, first of all, 11 and a half years is a very long time, yeah. um, especially to be misaligned in your so misaligned. your your goals and yeah. desires for the relationship um even if you could sleep in the same room that's a long time to be having that level of misalignment and i think that is probably desire to have children is probably the most fundamental if you are not on the same page that relationship is not going to work out 100%. so you have to you have to end it and if it, you don't, and then ends, there ends up yeah. actually being a a baby in the picture. Prepare to be like the prepare to be a very sad novel of like a sad yeah. dad, like just like a man who like goes and sits in the parking lot of like a McDonald's after work and just sits there for like an hour just to like have some like just it, it will ruin your life. It will like, ruin <laughs> it will ruin the child and the life. child's right. life. Like yeah. everyone involved, everyone involved loses. Yeah. That's the thing. It's yeah. just like. Every, no one wins in this scenario. Mm -hmm. right. So like, yeah. do not like tread down that path thinking like one, that kids will fix something wrong. Mm -mm. If anything, it makes it more difficult, more strained. Or and, compromising to or make comp that decision. Or yeah. compromising yeah. to make that decision. If you are like steadfast in your decision now that you don't want kids, mm -hmm. you need to stick to those guns because mm -hmm. ultimately at the, I mean, kind of primarily the child will will, yeah. will be will be the yeah. like object of the resentment that these two parents have yeah. for each other exactly. and it will be used in really maladaptive ways and manipulative ways and that like no one deserves that from the outside it's also i mean if you want to end the relationship ever at all mm -hmm. you should not be with this person I, yeah. I think i think this person knows that it's just a, a situation of trying to initiate that conversation yeah. but having a child you're probably gonna end up not together even if you do have a child. And then it's gonna be just having to deal with divorced parents and sharing custody of a child and yeah. like that whole yeah. rigmarole, which is no one should have to deal with that or go through that. Uh, obviously millions and millions of people mm -hmm. do. Yeah. Um, but have you guys ever been in a situation where you've, and you don't have to you know, say specifics, mm -hmm. but been in a relationship where 
you tried to break up with them or tried to end it and it didn't end <laughs> it didn't it didn't take <laughs> it, it didn't take <laughs> uh yes as a matter of fact yeah. yeah uh and you know there was nothing on the line as like uh, there was nothing in, in the stakes of it mm. on the level of like oh the potential child uh, was, was in the picture right. um you know it was a it was a it was a serious long-term relationship that was very fraught and so like kind of circled the drain a couple of times mm -hmm. and came close to ending and then you know like people make up and like um, you know try to make things work and like sometimes that's great and sometimes you come out the other side stronger and like more resilient and you know more invested and curious and and, and dedicated to the other person and sometimes you don't mm -hmm. and it just kind of st it stems the avalanche just a little while longer and mm -hmm. like staunches the bleeding um and then and the, uh, mine was the uh, latter. <laughs> it, yeah. just, it just kind of like it just kind of papered over the cracks a little bit, and then eventually it ended. Paper mache. Yeah, it's really, really, uh, really shoddy workmanship. As a matter, of, if I do say so myself. Um, and then it ended, but you know there was nothing like a kid uh, on the, uh, involved yeah. in this situation. So I've definitely been, you know, a part of, in a relationship that should have ended before it did. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you're, you're human human beings who like want to make things work and want to make you know. Uh, uh, things last if, if possible, and sometimes they don't. And it's I'm, I'm saying right now from this story and all the context because we have there, like again, sleeping is the least of your worries. <laughs> yeah. But also, I mean, a major day to day factor that can like have serious, uh, uh, you know, life and health quality uh, issues. But this person needs to get out. That is like yeah. one thing that's 100%. abundantly clear. So, and it's anyway. actually it's the it is the kind and respectful thing to do for her honestly, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like she will benefit from not being in a relationship with someone who does not fundamentally want the same things as her. 100%. She needs to she be with someone. see that at first. Right, <laughs> right. And it's, it's yeah. that's, I think, I'm, I'm sure what the difficult part of this dynamic is that they both obviously care about each other to some extent, even if the relationship isn't working the way it should or the way they want it yeah. to. Um, if they didn't care about each other, I'm sure they would not have spent probably 11 and a half years together. Seriously. Um, so I think there's probably a foundation of mutual, at least respect or care that they're coming from. But I think it's probably just, I mean, I'd be curious why if she has been with this person who has on multiple occasions said they do not want children. Yeah. That I think the, the one of the last things they said was like, she's convinced I want. I think she basically is like yeah. insisting, she's insisting that she wants that, kids and that like that you I, will yeah, want Yeah, that that person as well. And I think the thing that's, that's difficult there is like, you can't know another person's like wants and heart and what they need. And so if he's telling her, I do not want to have children, she has to respect and acknowledge that that is how he feels and that will not change. Right. Um, and even if it does change, the, you are you should not, that is too big of a gamble to say, I'm going to just hope that if I have a kid, yeah. you're going to change your mind. Dude, because the fact that she got pregnant, like yeah. that could have been yeah. so life altering. I mean, it would have been life altering. Yeah. Um, and obviously like the loss of a child is never something to celebrate, obviously. It's devastating and I'm sure extremely traumatic for everyone involved, but like, yeah. probably for the best that they didn't end up having a child together because that could have put ruined you in three, essentially a lifelong situation. Ruined three lives potentially. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. And you know, I think something that's also in, in this scenario, I mean, it's, it's an 11 year relationship. That's a lot of time. And I think, you know, it's an investment, whether good or bad, that really puts just the fear of the unknown in people. Mm. And so like, they're like, it truly, I, I feel like there's an element of devil you know versus devil yeah. you don't. And like- Also like you, a sunk cost fallacy. The sunk, absolute sunk cost oh, fallacy yeah. of just like, yeah. well, I pour it, like, it may suck, but I poured all like this time and energy into this relationship. Or just like, how am I supposed to find someone to date now? And I've been with this one person for yeah. 11 years. 11 years. And just like yeah. the like daunting thought of like, oh, do I, that means I have to like, I don't know how old these people are, but mm. then you get to the point where it's like, oh, dating, uh, you know, the, after being in a relationship, like, what a fucking nightmare. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's like, you you start like, you you, you start thinking about like the, li the life that like lays before you on the other side of this relationship. Mm -hmm. And that can dissuade you from taking any action because there is a cold comfort in yeah. this familiar thing, even if it's bad, but Brother, let me tell you. <laughs> brother. Brother. <laughs> camera me, to camera. <laughs> can, let me tell you, brother. Uh, you all, you and she will ultimately, I truly 
without a doubt believe be happier out, out of this relationship. 5,000 yes. 5, million percent. And I think yeah. obviously, uh, you know, he mentioned that he's tried to break up with her before mm-hmm. and that it's just like she's convinced him to stay and they've like worked things out, which I, if I were in her position and if someone was trying to break up with me, I'd be like, cool, do it because I don't want to be with someone who doesn't yeah. want to be with me as much as I want to be with them. Correct. And if yeah. you have any feeling of wanting to break up with me, okay. It's gonna fucking suck, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, yeah. And that's why I'm saying have a have an exit strategy. Like think about this. Mm-hmm. Think about like you know you know make a plan. I know that sounds kind of like weird to be like okay I have a breakup plan, mm-hmm. but that will having that like things lined up to like okay I have, you know place to stay things mm-hmm. like make arrangements all this kind of thing like do do your research and like have that in place so that when you do have that very difficult conversation, you, you you can focus on the steps of the plan, which will keep you from backsliding and to be like, well, okay, I guess you can stay the night on the couch is what you normally stay. And then in the morning you have another conversation yeah. and then like all of a sudden, oh no, you're back in this. Yeah. Like the next thing you know, you're like, it's like, okay, well we're broken up. So I'm going to stay on the couch. Next thing you know, you're having breakfast the next morning and talking about it. And like, well, this maybe person, we shouldn't. Well, maybe we shouldn't. No, it's yeah, like, yeah. boom, make the decision, cut it off, stay at a hotel, whatever it is, but like make a plan mm-hmm. and an exit strategy so that like you stick to what you're clearly convicted of. Like yeah. this is something that you think should happen. And you should make plans to make it happen. Agreed, hundred percent. There's yeah. no question that they should break up. Yeah. If you, if one of you, both, both parents need to really want to have a kid. That that's just the bottom line. Ding also, ding 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 ding. Even just, if yeah. we take the the child stuff completely out of the equation of this question, he's still mentioning that he's not feeling reciprocation. Yeah. There's been complications. There's issues with their sleeping yeah. habits. There's issues with her not pulling her weight in the relationship and like... Or them just... Him feeling like she never... I think part of it, the sense that I'm getting too from what you were just saying too, is like if she is someone who has... Maybe this is the only person she's ever been with. Um, she's spent a huge amount of her life with this person. Um, then if she never developed that sense of autonomy and that sense of her own identity and the ability to be on her own, that is, I'm sure, terrifying for her to be like, this is the only person I've been with or one of the only people I've been with. I've been with them for 11 years. I don't know who I am without this person. I'm sure that's probably a lot of where her intense desire to stay in this relationship with someone who does not want the same things as her is coming from. And that's something that he, I think, also recognizes that he's not going to change. Like, she's not going to develop that independence, that sense of self or autonomy until they are no longer together. 100%. And she's able to identify, do I really want a kid? Because if she was uncertain about wanting a kid but then saw, you know, family members have one, wanting a kid and wanting a kid with him are also different, different things. things. Yes. Different things. Yes. Very different things. So I think for her, it, it, you know, he, I think he knows it's, it's going to hurt her and it's going to hurt both of them. But ultimately it will be like you said, like you've both said, like in service of the two of them and any future children she would have, she should want her children to have a parent who wants to be there, who wants right. them. Which I never understand. Like, know? don't you want the father of your children to want to want the children? You don't want to have to convince no. someone that they want to be a parent. No. As a parent, I can say <laughs> you want it them to is be all in. <laughs> so much work. If someone is on the fence about wanting to be a parent, Parent, it is going to be extreme. If you're not sleeping now, you're not going to sleep when you have a baby. Oh, like it is no. this where you're sleeping <laughs> will not be an issue. Like that's the kind of thing where both people have to want it so yeah. definitively. And it has to be a proactive choice that you are both committed to. And no amount of convincing she's going to try to do if this is truly what he feels is going to change his mind. And right. it is, it's just not going to happen. And so for her sake, she needs to accept the fact that if he is what he is telling her is true and that it is for the best for the both of them, even if it's going to hurt in the short term, she will be better off without yeah. that relationship. And something that very important that needs to be reiterated, no one gets out of this unhurt. Yeah, you should right. really understand that like yeah. there is no there is no way this ends or someone isn't devastated. Right. And that's part of breakup since why they're sad and why they <laughs> suck. But I think we kind of convinced ourselves that like we can logic our way out of a feeling problem. Mm-hmm. That it just makes yeah. like so understand. And once you mentally ascend to the fact that like that you're both going to be hurt by this mm-hmm. because this is a, like a long term relationship. But understanding that that is part of the process and that you can't 
no one gets out of this unscathed. Yeah, staying so, together does not end with both of you happy, nor does, yes. yeah, like there's no version of this yeah. that's... So, and like, it's going to be, I think the thing a lot of people start thinking about when they want to break up with someone, especially after a long-term relationship, is mm-hmm. like, oh, we live together, so they're going to have to pack up their stuff, and then there's going to be these awkward things where they have to come back, and like, we have to find a new place and do all this, and it's like, mm-hmm. yes, that's going to happen, and yes, that's something you're going to have to deal with, but you will get through it, Yeah, whether it takes a day whether it takes a week whether it takes six months like Mm -hmm. eventually you will be through that and you'll be happier on the other side yeah it's just gonna be really fucking painful that's where you need andrew's patented breakup plan that's right (laughs) yeah get your get get a a, a little like if you need to make a damn checklist yeah seriously do it make a checklist phone numbers so people you can call for support also literally if you are going if you're making a plan to break up, which I again I suggest you do, like literally tell like some close friends, like maybe mm-hmm. one or two close friends, and be like, hey, I'm I'm gonna break up with my significant other. Can I call you? Like literally have like a support system in place for like mm-hmm. yeah. those difficult moments where it would be easy maybe to backslide. Oh, like, because, I might need to crash with you for a few days. I, I mean, need to crash for you to like I need moral support. Moral also support to, do this. to yeah. again, like this is a if you need a checklist, make a checklist yeah. and stick to phone numbers, like addresses. I'm serious. It, it feels like a heist a little bit. Like you, yeah. like, but it's Im- it's yeah. important and will yeah. help you follow through on something that you need to do. And the bottom line is, I think reminding yourself that you're doing this for both of you. You're not ending this relationship because it's selfishly just for yourself. It is ultimately in, but also, in service of both of you. Even if it was just for yourself. Yeah, totally fine. That's a totally valid Absolutely. reason to end a relationship because if you're not yeah. happy and this person wants to be with you, but you're not happy, that is also a justified reason to break up. Yeah. You could be selfish in this situation. And obviously with the whole factor of the traumatic pregnancy complication Mm -hmm. and that whole, like I understand maybe not wanting to do it the day after that happens. Yeah. Fair. But it's going to take her time to heal from that. And like, that is something that I'm sure you feel the obligation to help her through and to be with her through. But it's also, it's, if anything, it's something you can point to to say, this is a very, difficult situation you have been put through and that we're in you know we've gone through together and it puts in stark relief my feelings will not change yeah i want to support you i want to do what's right for you and this is what's right for you and for me is for this to not then you smoke cloud out of there then you use (gasps) your you call in the helicopter with the drop down (laughs) rope ladder (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. airy vac yeah Yeah, exactly yeah yeah, exactly all right well let's finish it up with one more question yes this one's a little more straightforward okay Mm -hmm. i'm a college student right now and I've noticed a change in stigma towards mental health diagnosis. I had a professor count me absent for not having a doctor's note when I had an impromptu therapy session and missed class because I was in a pretty rough spot. The professor, who was young, told me, well, everyone's depressed. That's not an emergency. How do you deal with the stigma around mental health being so mainstream that some people don't take it seriously? I don't know (laughs) that I would call... That's so interesting because to me... One, I wouldn't call it mainstream. Um, I would say it's more widely understood. Well, recognized that it's something people deal with. But the thing is, if it was truly widely understood, they would understand that it it isn't something that's just like, you're just like, "Eh, I don't feel like going to class. You know, like I think if you truly understand depression and you understand um, the struggles that people go through with their mental health, if you are missing class because you need to speak with your therapist, that is a legitimate need. That's yeah. not, that's, I, th- yeah, if the answer is everybody's depressed, yeah, that's a pretty bad timeline for all of <laughs> yeah. us. And like, we should all be taking time to take like care of each other. The professor who is young is acting, not young, is acting like maybe a, more of the boomer generation that's just like, everyone's depressed these days. Yeah. And it's just an excuse where it's like, I think uh, like- Toughen up, buttercup. Yeah. Like, it's like, well, Hold on a second. Well, first of all, I've identified uh, a major issue here. In college, mistake. What a scam. Get out. No, um, <laughs> no. I, I think like that it, it, that idea. It's like mental health. It's health. It's also part of your body. Mm. We should all go to the doctor. Like yeah. this is all part of the same system, bud. Like yeah. so to say, like oh, everyone's depressed. It's like yeah. Also, everyone has a body that needs they, to go to the doctor to get checked. This is like not. Yeah. These are inextricably linked. So that's right. like. It makes absolutely no sense as like a I think this professor thought that was a pretty witty rejoinder that they could like <laughs> it's like well everyone's depressed so not an excuse like yeah it's like yeah don't isn't don't you see there's a problem with that like that's yeah. not like 
that's not an answer to yeah. uh, uh, as a prof- it's pr- just yeah well and it's also so is the professor suggesting we should all just go on being depressed and un- and not feeling like we can function in our day-to-day lives yeah, like so is we the can answer, listen to your lecture about yeah, the, the, the paleo an- something <laughs> yeah. like yeah is the answer you want us all to continue being depressed and not seeking help and and not you know working to improve our situation like mm. i think that to me is the part of it where it's it's it is. It's very clearly that professor making a very flippant, yeah. you know, yeah. thoughtless comment that they, like you said, probably thought was funny. Um, but in reality, like I think part of mental health, you know, stigma. Well, I think part of people acknowledging the importance of mental health more widely is removing the stigma of care. Mm. It's it's mm-hmm. that it's one thing for the professor to be like everyone's depressed. Okay, so now you have awareness. Yeah, yeah, everybody's right. correct. Everybody, correct. Correct. Every, correct. Correct. Maybe there's a deeper issue here. Correct. That that's an uh, indication, with. a sign of the times. Um, so there's more than just awareness. So I think what this person is getting at is like, oh, I, it's difficult when now it feels like everybody knows that like mental health is something people struggle with. But there's a difference between awareness and actual advocacy and giving people the ability to then proactively take care of themselves. 100%. And there's, I think that's the, the, the issue with this professor is like, maybe they're aware of the fact that a lot of people struggle with their mental health. They simply don't care. Um, yeah. The, the only thing I could think of to try to play devil's advocate in this situation, which I hate that term, <laughs> but I'm going to use it anyways, is I think there, because there's so much awareness about mental health and also like various mental health issues that people suffer from Mm -hmm. that I think a lot of people are quick to self-diagnose. Sure. um, Which I think that's where it maybe comes from with like being more mainstream of people just being like, yeah, I I have ADHD or like, oh, I'm depressed or, oh, I have anxiety. And it's like TikTok diagnosed me with ADHD is what you're. Yes. And and so like, I feel like (laughs) that's maybe more where the issue comes from of people Mm -hmm. not. Mm going to a professional to get diagnosed or assuming because they're feeling a certain way that automatically that's this. Yeah. I think that's the only issue surrounding this, but in terms of like people not taking legitimate mental health did, issues seriously. It's, yeah. Did they say they have, they had a doctor's note or they said that, uh, he counted him absent for not having a doctor's note. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Cause it was an I mean, impromptu therapy session. Gotcha. And I think that's, the, at the end of the day, also like absences. I mean, like it's college cares? too. Yeah, who cares? Like, but it, yeah, I think as long as you like have provided, even after the fact, like if your doctor's like, yes, they were here, we were taking care of their mental health, like that should suffice for that person. It doesn't really matter if it's retroactive or proactive because you get care when you need it. And um, I'm pretty sure any therapist, like, also, we'll, we'll just write you a note. Like, yeah. like mm-hmm. I'm this class for our like, which was clearly a necessary impromptu yeah. like therapy session. I'm sure. Like, ask ask your therapist. Yeah. Hey, I miss. Literally, just ask them what you the problem that you said in this email in this yeah. question, and then give it to your professor retroactively. Like, yeah. that should be right. no problem at all, and, and they can go check. Yeah. And now, if you give them the doctor's note from a therapist, and they go, "This doesn't count because therapy doctor's notes yeah. don't count." Fuck that professor. Fuck that professor. Now, like, cause, because it's like, again, because it's college, the idea that I would want to, that I'm lying to you about like not yeah. coming to class. It's like, yeah. I'm paying for yeah. this. This class cost I me don't, $125. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. have to be here. Yeah. Like, so like the fact that I'm even giving you an excuse for not being here should show you that I'm one, dedicated to like being in this class and making good on it. Mm-hmm. And also that like, I don't have to bullshit you and like yeah, right. make up an excuse. I went to a doctor's appointment. It's like, so if, they, if they're not willing to take an actual therapist doctor's note that you get retroactively, then this is, I would say this is a battle not worth fighting and you should just like. They're on a power trip. Yes. That's yes. basically I what's I think it's happening. honestly yeah. just going to be a case by case basis. Yeah. Because it seems like this prof- professor uh, in particular probably doesn't take mental health seriously mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and likes to just assume that all young people are self-diagnosing and think mm-hmm. like no one's actually feeling this way and blah, 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 mm-hmm. and just are saying they're depressed because everyone's saying they're depressed. And yeah. you might have a teacher that feels completely differently or like, yeah. and I think it just happens to be this person you're dealing with who yeah. just sucks in this situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but not saying it's just this professor. It's important to, yes. And I think the bottom line is you did what was important, which was you got the help you needed. And people are becoming more aware of mental health, you know, struggles that people go through. And just sometimes you're going to run into the people who don't give it the appropriate level of consideration and still don't take it seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And all you can do is exactly what you did, which was say, hey, here's why I was out. I did it. And that person will hopefully um, come to understand it better in the future. And maybe don't take another class with them. 
Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe opt for a different professor if they're teaching a, a course you need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know. Yeah. You have more freedom in, in college, at least. But one thing you, I will echo what Hannah just said. Keep going to therapy. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. If you keep take going. anything, keep going to therapy. And yeah, also, don't, uh, don't let that dissuade you from not going to therapy. Like, right. what, what one professor says, keep going to therapy. Keep, uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, keep uh, investigating yourself. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? Keep and also, if you do need a day to not be in class because you are going through a rough situation or in a rough spot mentally, take that time for yourself. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And don't let someone feel make you feel guilty about that. Yeah. I like can't you tell wrong. you how many absences I had in any of my entire college experience. It does not. It <laughs> it most doesn't classes matter. I missed. Yeah. It does not matter in <laughs> you, the long scheme. And you will never, once you're out of college, once you're like later in life, you will never think about the one time, like, or like, you'll never think about an absence from a class you had and how it like completely changed your, like yeah. in the grand scheme of things, not like, you know, uh, but taking steps to like, taking steps to better your mental health and, you know, s getting that, uh, getting that support, in fact, will help you in the <laughs> mm -hmm. long term and affect, affect your like well -being, life, throughout, well being yeah. throughout your life. So you're doing the right thing, is what yes, I'm saying. Yes, absolutely. I, I completely co sign on your behavior. <laughs> we say, screw your teacher, listen to us. We'll be your new professors, <laughs> all three of us collectively. That's right. Yep. Teaching you the new way. All right. Well, thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you for sending in your wonderful questions. Again, if you want to write into the show, you can at alwaysopen at roosterteeth.com. Um, but yeah, thank you both. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you. you for watching the show. And we'll see you next Tuesday for another episode of Always Open. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you guys so much for watching that episode of Always Open. If you liked it, leave us a comment below and make sure you're subscribed to the All Good Knowers YouTube channel where this show premieres every single Tuesday and we have tons of other content every Thursday. Enjoy. And thank you for being here. Are you still watching me? <laughs>